Oh, demon souls, you little scamp. Hi there, I'm Ben, and welcome to Should You Platinum, the series where I help you decide whether to platinum a game or not. This week, we're looking at the remake of the game that started it all. For years, Demon Souls was inaccessible for a lot of people, and I suppose it still is at the moment. There was no way to play it unless you had a PS3. A remake of Demon's Souls has been the most requested within the Souls community, and it's finally here, and as a surprise launch title for the PS5. Demon's Souls was easily my most anticipated title for this year, even when it was announced very late on, and it is now easily my game of the year. I know some of you frown on remakes being included in game of the year lists, but I don't, so that's why it's king. But after all, my opinion of this game doesn't matter here. This isn't a review of Demon's Souls Remake. This is a review of the process of getting the Platinum Trophy in the Demon's Souls Remake. Right, off the bat here, I'm going to address something for those of you that have the Platinum for the original. Don't worry, I won't keep comparing the two games, but I think that this is important. You're probably wondering, is the upgrade stone farming to obtain all weapon types still a massive part of the Platinum? And the answer is kind of, but not really. First of all, all weapon trophies are gone. You don't need to find all the rare weapons or craft any of the boss weapons, save for one right at the end of the game, so you can solely use your boss souls for purchasing spells and miracles, and yes, this does mean fewer playthroughs. Also, for those wondering, the duping trick is gone, so it's just as well we don't need all the upgrade materials and boss souls for crafting weapons for trophies. You remember the worst part of farming for upgrade materials, the infamous pure bladestone only available from the black skeleton on the ritual path? Yeah, that's still something you need to do unfortunately, except this time you need to trade it with Sparkly for one of the four new rings. Who'd you talk about? Okay, for those of you new to Demon's Souls, that will have made no sense and I do apologise, but if that confused you, wait until I explain all about world and character tendency. There is a reason it never made a return in any of the subsequent Souls games, and you're going to hear about that later on. The new trophy list is a lot more streamlined, on the surface at least. There's a trophy for killing each boss except the two dragons, you can skip those entirely now. While doing the bosses, there are a handful of trophies for killing some of them in a certain way. For example, vanquish the fool's idol without hitting any of her clones. These are really cool inclusions, but they are highly missable. You will be playing the game twice, so... Fool me once. Shame on... Shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. You have to rescue certain NPCs, but they are integral to acquiring all spells and miracles, so you'll be doing that anyway. You will need to acquire every spell and miracle in the game, but that's simple enough. They can be bought with the boss souls that you've acquired from killing each boss. The real problem is acquiring all the rings, because that is where world and character tendency comes into play. World or character tendency can be either black or white. This is changed by your actions while playing the game. Maxing out either black or white is called pure tendency. World tendency moves towards white when you kill bosses, but towards black if you die in human form. Character tendency moves to white if you kill certain black phantom NPCs. To get these NPCs to appear, you need to be in pure black world tendency. But you can't do that right away because you need to be in pure white world tendency so that you can access the other world events and rings. To move character tendency to pure black you need to kill NPCs but you can't do that because you need to purchase items, spells and miracles from them. But ultimately for one of the rings you need to kill all NPCs. Before you do that though you need to be in pure white character tendency for a different ring. You need to kill all five of the aforementioned black phantoms to get pure white character tendency. But there are only five per playthrough so if you accidentally move slightly towards black you'll have to do it in new game plus and the black phantoms are really tough in new game plus like ridiculous. Why not use Poison Cloud or get them to fall off a cliff? That's the easy way to do it. It is yes, but you won't get credit for the kill, therefore your tendency won't shift and you will once again miss your chance at pure white character tendency. On top of all that, even if you do everything right, you can't tell at the time because the in-game tracking is so poor and you can't tell the difference between each type of tendency on the screen where you track it because they all look the bloody same. At least the graphics are nice though. Seriously though, don't let all of that put you off, I just made all of that sound worse than it actually is. As long as you have a plan and stick to it, it's easy to stay on course and not screw things up. Everything I just mentioned can be done in just over one and a half playthroughs, with a bit of clever save manipulation of course. 
The best way not to go wrong would be to follow a comprehensive full platinum walkthrough, right? That's correct, Timmy. And if you're watching this video the day it was released, then tomorrow I will start uploading my full platinum guide. If you're watching this in the future, when did we get flying cars? Oh, and the guide will be complete and the playlist will be in the description. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the difficulty of the game. Obviously, the Souls games have a reputation. To some extent, it is justified, but these games aren't that legendary 10 out of 10 difficulty that you've been led to believe. Like I've said plenty of times before, I've played a lot more difficult games than the Souls series. Unlike the Dark Souls games, there are only a couple of brute force bosses in Demon Souls that require you to get good. With the most notorious probably being Flame Lurker, for the vast majority of the others though, there is always some sort of gimmick, like the old hero for instance. He's blind, so he relies on his hearing. Normally he'd be a pretty brutal boss, as he can hear you and chase you down as if he was able to see. Equip a certain ring however, and well, I won't spoil it, but let's just say things become a lot more peaceful. Demon Souls does almost feel like a puzzle game at times in that respect. Look for an easier option, and there usually is one. New Game Plus however, that's another story. One hit kills at your expense can be an all too common thing. Demon's Souls probably has the hardest new game plus out of all of the Souls games. Right, let's put some numbers on this thing. Difficulty, I'm going to presume that you haven't played Demon's Souls or a Souls game in general before. In that case, you'd be looking at an eight out of 10. If you do have experience with the genre, that number can come down pretty considerably. Time to Platinum, you're looking at anywhere between 20 and 40 hours, I think I did it in 22. Again, depends on experience. This game definitely is more condensed and less grindy than its Dark Souls counterparts, however. For collectibles, I'm counting all of the spells, miracles and rings, and a certain sword that you need to acquire, so there are 61. I encountered zero glitches, for me personally the game ran flawlessly. There are 20 missable trophies, basically any trophy that isn't a boss trophy is missable. The game does have a constant new game plus loop, so you can always just do another playthrough. Weapons, items, stats and character tendency all carry over to the next playthrough, so you will have a chance to do these things again. So to go back to the title of the video, should you platinum demon souls? This isn't a game for everyone, that is for certain. It will take a lot of dedication, planning and patience. But once you're in, you're invested and you won't want to put it down. If you're sick of all the open world games and their monotonous tasks and seemingly never ending pointless collectible hunts, and instead you fancy a more condensed and rewarding platinum experience, then at that point, yes, yes you should platinum Demon Souls. There are a few things in life as satisfying as taking down a Souls boss that you've been stuck on for a while. Like I said, once you're in, that's it, you'll want to play them all. Right, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments what you think of Demon's Souls. Is it finally time for you to take the leap or have I put you off for good? I do hope it's the former. Join me at the same time next week for another Should You Platinum. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.